good afternoon friends i am sunita fadkule working as a professor in department of mechanical engineering at jspm jayvantrao sawan college of engineering hadapsar pune uh, before starting the session i will introduce myself in brief i have completed be mechanical from coep in 1985 <coughs> then completed me mechanical in design engineering from walchand college of engineering sangli <coughs> in 1994 after a long gap, I completed PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Pune University recently, that is in July 2020. I have total 30 years of teaching experience and 2 years of industrial experience. I have worked in Tuldapur Engineering College, uh, WIT Solapur, then AISSMS College of Engineering and uh, now I am working at JSPM, Jaiwantrao Sound College of Engineering, Hadapsar, Pune. I had worked there uh, as a HOD mechanical for 10 years and now working as a vice principal since last seven years. So today we are today we are virtually connecting ourselves with each other. This pandemic situation has given us an opportunity to learn many things in our life. So here we are sharing our knowledge and our experiences. Uh, to make true the title of this online series, that is, let us learn and grow together. So, I am thankful to Dattatre Ghodke sir for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you. So, today I am going to discuss with you something different about learning and growing of mechanical engineering domain which you can surely share with your mechanical students or the aspiring candidates of engineering admission. See, today's situation is that if you ask any 12 science pass students uh, that if he wants to take the admission in engineering, which branch are you interested in? From 90% candidates, you will hear CS and IT answer. Does it mean that our old traditional streams of engineering education such as electrical, civil, mechanical are becoming absolute? Does it mean that the traditional fields are heading towards a dead end? The answer is definitely no. Mechanical is still a primitive branch of engineering. This is always remain in demand and continue to be remain in future also. That is why the mechanical trend is known as a evergreen trend. Only the thing is that we have to change our direction of learning to some extent, which will fulfill the future trend of mechanical engineering. So, uh, what are the contents of today's my presentations? Uh, first, we are going to discuss about core and future domains of mechanical engineering. Then, what are the new skill set required for mechanical engineers? Then, uh, what global skill index study says about mechanical engineering? And then, what are the online platforms available for any mechanical engineering students such as Coursera, uh, then Swayam or NPTEL? Okay. So, what are the learning outcomes from today's presentation? The first learning outcome is mechanical engineer will be able to develop the skill in demand through online courses, especially programming skill. And what is the learning outcome too? Mechanical engineer will become employable in future domain through skill development. So, uh, let us see what are the different domains of mechanical engineering. Uh, we can divide it into two categories, core domain and future domain. So, there are uh, primarily these four domains are there. The first is design, computer-aided engineering and computational fluid dynamics, that is CFD. Second is refrigeration and air conditioning. Third is automotive sector, which is now uh, growing or changing to electrical vehicles. And then fourth is manufacturing, automation, mechatronics and robotics. So, for these four core mechanical domains, I will just go through it very fast. But mainly, we will be talking about the future domain of mechanical engineering. That is 3D printing technology, software development, industrial internet of things and data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, 
So before discussing the domains of the mechanical engineering, let us first see what do you mean by industry 4.0. So as all of us know that there are four revolutions of the industry. Uh, first revolution is from 1784 to 1870. That is uh, in this era, all the machineries were powered by mechanical or steam or water uh, uh, force, uh, water uh, power. Okay, then. From 1870 to, 1870 to 1970, this was the second revolution where the electrically powered mass production machineries were there. And in the third revolution, that is from 1970 to 2010, the th third revolutions were driven by the electronics and IT to achieve the automation of the manufacturing. And now in the fourth industry revolution, that is industry 4.0, which has been roughly started from 2010. This is based on cyber physical system. Okay, That means uh, you can say smart machines. Everything we can call it as a smart. A smart refrigerator, smart air conditioning, smart bicycle, uh, smart dustbin. That means what? We use modern control systems which have embedded software systems and dispose of an internet addresses to connect with the internet of things. So this way products and the means of productions get network with each other and can communicate enable the new way of production. For example, uh, so that is the internet of things that we see in detail later on. But basically this industry 4.0 refers to the intelligent networking of machines and processes for the industry. It is with the help of the information and communication technology. So this is our industry 4.0. Now let us uh, see this slide. This is, see, this slide shows that still mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering drives other branches. So industry 4.0 refers to the intelligent networking of machines and processes with the help of information and communication technology. Okay, so that means it is very important that mechanical engineering will be remaining evergreen branch. Let us see the uh, move fast with this core domain of the mechanical engineering. So the first domain is design, CAE and CFD domain. Okay, so the industry experts say that CAD, CAM and CAE provides an exciting career in the industry. They can make the career in the following industries, say automotive industry, foundry, sheet metal industry, plastic mold, press tools, etc, etc. CFD basically is used to determine the flow structure over the wings or you can say the shape of the car or you can also use it to estimate the drag and lift coefficient uh, in the aeroplane or disc brake cooling, radiators, wind turbine blade shape analysis etc so cfd is also you can say core mechanical engineering and also very upcoming field of mechanical engineering let us talk about the second major domain of the core mechanical engineering that is refrigeration and air conditioning uh, in short it is known as a hvac and r that is heating ventilation air conditioning and refrigeration Okay. So, our India falls in the hot region. The demand of refrigeration and air conditioning is day by day increasing. If we think 30 years before, the air conditioning was assumed to be in a luxurious life. But today, air conditioning becomes need of all residences. You can say malls, shopping complex, theatres, hospitals. It is must air conditioning is day by day it is increasing. So, this HVAC system is a basic requirement of also in a pharmaceutical manufacturing because in pharmaceutical manufacturing company, the HVAC system is used to control the environment in the manufacturing as well as the storage area. So, the scope of HVAC, uh, you can say you can work as a process engineer, you can work as a project engineer or maintenance engineer or design engineer. Uh, that is in any field that is heating or ventilation or air conditioning or refrigerations. The main uh, you can say uh, after if you want to make the career as HVAC and R engineer, 
these are the big companies where you can get the jobs say thermax whirlpool career carrier godrej blue star lg may not be immediately after you pass out from the mechanical engineering degree because it, it requires certain experience in the hvac field so the students usually they work for 2 3 years in a very small scale or medium scale industry of the refrigeration and air conditioning uh, system and after taking 2 3 years experience uh, they learn so many things from that small scale industry that easily they will be absorbed in such a big industry so this is the the next domain of the mechanical engineering is automotive sector you can see here how the automotive sector is changing its uh, say uh, changing from ic engine to electric vehicle all of us know that fossil fuel is on the verge of finishing in coming years and due to air pollution reason all vehicle manufacturers are shifting their focus on the clean and green energy vehicles so india's focus on the next generation mobility uh it has geared up under the government scheme say uh nemmp that is national electric mobility mission plan so if we see the future of automotive sector is nothing but the electric vehicle see these are the architecture of the electric vehicles so mechanical engineer of course can think of making his career in the automotive sector but into the electric vehicles there are many challenges in the adoption of the evs such as uh, charging infrastructure then uh, battery performance uh, additional grid capacity is required for it even high purchase cost that is also uh, one of the challenge challenging area in the electric vehicle the major focus of the future trend you can say that is a self driving car there is a major innovation in the automotive sector in the self driving cars it is the latest technology in the vehicle we have used which is still under research stage as the name itself suggests that a vehicle which can drive itself from one point to another without the assistance of a driver that is it is an autopilot system so the major component of autonomous cars are gps radar video cameras position estimator etc so automobile is also in a changing direction is a very good field where mechanical engineer can do his career the next domain of the mechanical engineering is which is nothing but a combination of core mechanical engineering and multidisciplinary approach so it is a manufacturing and automation and robotics okay so with the rapid development of artificial intelligence and robotics technology uh, automation is one of the growing area of mechanical engineers okay one of the most important application areas of automation is the manufacturing many people says that automation means it is uh, manufacturing automation only the scope of this automation is uh, you can say earlier it was uh, fixed automation type was there but nowadays it is a programmable automation and also a flexible automation today most uh, most robots are used in manufacturing operations in the applications of material handling processing operations and then mm. assembly and inspection okay in robotics processing operations basically we see these uh, robots uh, used in the car manufacturing uh, in the doing the spot welding continuous arc welding spray painting etc so these industrial robots are widely used in the area of assembly and inspection line uh, the one type of automation is a flexible manufacturing system which is the form of a flexible automation so in this automation uh, we find that several machine tools are linked together by a material handling system and all aspect of the system are controlled by a central computer so industrial robots then manufacturing industries automation in the industry these are all part of the core as well as uh, multidisciplinary approach of the mechanical engineering and now uh, there is human robot is also replacing fast uh, the for the activities of the manufacturing let us move to the future trend of the mechanical engineering now 
so one of the future trend of the mechanical engineering is additive manufacturing okay so the, this additive manufacturing which is also known as a 3d printing technology it involves a common method of uh, producing many mechanical parts with the help of a computer integrated technology that means the object model is created using the cad software the object then uh, it is saved in a stl format and it is allowed to be sliced into ultra thin layers creating a 3d object see in this figure we can see how using the slicing the 3d object is created uh, in the manufacturing or you can say in education education also now the students are utilizing this 3d printing technology for their project work to create the prototype otherwise they would have to go for the expensive tooling okay so in manufacturing also the 3d printing technology is greatly uh, used it reduces the lead times required in the traditional manufacturing it allows uh, the prototype to be built in a hardly in a few hours otherwise it would have been required many weeks to for the manufacturing of the uh, mechanical components but it uh, it uh, the uh, leading that means the manufacturing time is reduced and the cost is also reduced basically this 3d manufacture 3d printing uh, find its application is in automotive and aerospace industries so these are the two big industries which are involved in the manufacturing of uh, say components and they are using 3d printing technologies for their uh, manufacturing of the components uh, even you can say this is the medicine field where the 3d printing technology is used uh, we know that it is very difficult and expensive to produce the artificial human organs such as prosth uh, prosthetics lower jaw that fit into a patient there are so many trials and errors we have to take but with the help of 3d printing technology such human organs can be modeled and printed at significantly lower cost not only the human organs but the pills are also produced using the 3d printing technology the major advantage of producing producing the pills is that uh, it is produced with the help of a binder jetting and uh, it produces the porous material so that the whatever the dosages are there maximum dosage dosages will be dissolved quickly and easily into the uh, pills whatever are produced by the with the help of a 3d printing technology uh, not only in the medical but we find the application of the civil uh, application of the 3d printing technology in uh, civil construction also the 3d printing is useful in fabricating say buildings uh, then construction components which are used in uh, you can say public sector or commercial sectors also uh, i will give the example of the uh, pedestrian bridge which was built in uh, madrid spain that is built in 2016 uh, the complete bridge was uh, built with the help of a 3d printing technology so it was the first large scale application of the 3d printing technology uh, in the field of uh, civil engineering okay um, and this 3d printing technology it is also used in the art and jewelry making nowadays so i will say that these i have just told you the few examples there are countless examples where the 3d printing technology uh, is uh, uh, used or rather uh, in few uh, sectors it is uh, the people are trying to use this 3d printing technology right from education to medicine from industry to art field also this 3d printing 3d printing technology is having a great impact on the today's world so definitely for any mechanical engineer there is a tremendous scope uh, to work in a additive manufacturing or 3d printing technology now the second future uh, domain of the mechanical engineering is software development 
see friends when we say software development it comes in our uh, picture always computer engineer comes uh, in our mind that okay software development is a work of computer engineer no mechanical engineers also can play an important role in the development and testing of software systems okay because in that they have to define how the system is supposed to behave so even if you are mechanical engineering students don't worry you can be offered a very good job in software company but what are the skill set required to get the opportunity in software development see these are the common uh, skill set required for any any engineering students he should have a good problem solving skill he should possess the creativity have good communication skill he must have the leadership qualities teamwork but very important skill set required for any mechanical uh, for any engineering students if he wants to work in a software development he should possess the knowledge of any one pro any programming skill what do you mean by programming skill means the engineer must learn the any one programming language such as c++ python java or .NET. So these are the four programming language which mechanical engineer can learn, can get mastery. Okay. One very frequent question asked by mechanical engineering students, always our students ask, Madam, we are from mechanical background uh, student, then how uh, is it not difficult for us to learn this uh, programming language? Okay. And uh, can we understand it thoroughly because our background is mechanical? So let me explain the importance of programming language uh, that why mechanical engineering students also uh, easily learn this programming language. So friends, I would like to highlight here the importance of programming languages. For every branch engineer, to learn one of the programming language is very important to make a good career in uh, you can say any field. It may be related to core mechanical engineering or may be related to, to the multidisciplinary domain. Actually speaking, see mechanical engineers have fear in their mind that programming language is very difficult to learn or uh, it uh, they think that it is the cup of tea of only computer and IT students. Actually, learning of any programming language is easier than to learn any concept of mechanical engineering because mechanical engineering students learn so many toughest subjects in their four years of courses. Okay, so here, uh, so once you understand the concept of any one programming language, it can be interpolated or it can be applied to all other languages. Means once you learn the Python, you can easily shift to C++ or Java or .NET. Uh, here I would uh, like to quote very interesting example uh, related with the programming language. Okay, everybody knows Virat Kohli. He is a very good batsman. He plays test matches. He plays one day matches and he plays 2020 matches also. But he has equal performance in all, all these matches. Why? Because he has acquired that basic cricketing skill, which he is applying in all the three types of cricket. So what I want to say here, uh, if you understand any one programming language thoroughly, you can apply that skill or utilize that skill in any other language. So it may be C or C++ or Python or Java. Nowadays, uh, say why people are stressing more on Python language? because it is easier than any other languages which are available. So for every engineering students, every now and then or at some point in future, you are going to require the knowledge of language because everything is moving towards automation. And when it comes to the automation, no, programming language is an integral part of the automation. So there is an immense demand in the market for mechanical engineer having knowledge of programming language. Okay, so in mechanical engineering, majority subjects, if we see, uh, those are analytical subjects. If you consider, say, uh, engineering mechanics, strength of material, theory of machine, heat transfer, uh, fluid mechanics, 
dynamics of machinery etc etc majority of the mechanical subjects required analytical skill so this analytical skill is very much helpful in the coding what is coding basically see it has only two things coding is nothing but it's uh, having only two things one is the logic and second one is the syntax okay syntax it is constant it is not going to change even next 50 years so once you learn the syntax you will not have to think about it what you are going to think about the logic how you apply the logic as per the application so you have to learn or you have to improve your logic by applying your analytical skill which is not at all impossible for any mechanical engineering students okay so if the students will start learning say python uh, or any uh, language then it will be very easier for them to uh, make their career in <coughs> interdisciplinary field okay one advantage of the python is that uh, say artificial intelligence machine learning etc all these things are built on python itself so uh, uh, when i discuss with the uh, say my friends who knows this uh, uh, c++ or java or programming language uh, very good so they are having the opinion that if your logic is very good if you are comfortable with the programming go for learning of c++ or java okay it's like uh, you can say practicing for test match or one day cricket and those who are having uh, you can say not having any background of programming back, uh, programming language or not having confidence of learning programming language or uh, having fear uh, in their mind that how can i learn this language they should go for python first so because python is easy so it is easy to learn python first like you can say it is a 2020 cricket match okay so once you learn python and if you want to go deeper in that one then you go back to java or c plus and learn conceptually uh, say all these languages now if you can see here the python applications are mentioned here okay say it may be a web development game development machine learning ai data science or everything is based on the python that's why whenever i discuss this point with my, with my colleague or computer science professors that mechanical engineering student should learn which language so uh, like i mentioned either they should go for python or c++ okay so here also that is uh, mention about the uh, programming language so here there are few uh, say software industries uh, i have mentioned where not only computer science students but mechanical engineer also can get the job if he is expert in any one programming language like tcs vpro uh, mdoc satyam or you can say infosys hsbc tech mahindra so many software companies are there that where this uh, mechanical engineer can think of making his career now the third uh, future uh, trend of the mechanical engineering is say iot that is internet of things okay so basically what is this iot so it is nothing but a system uh, uh, which is interrelated computing devices on machine and machines which have been provided with unique uh, id and which have been ability to transfer the data over a network without uh, interfering human to human interaction or human to computer interaction so uh, a thing in the iot it is internet of things very simple so it can be a person it can be an animal or it can be an object for example a human with a heart monitor implant or an animal with a biochip transponder or even an automobile which has built in sensors to alert the driver of any changes uh, in the vehicle such as if it is a low pressure is there in the tire tire it will immediately give the signal to the driver okay so these things become part of the iot when they have been assigned an ip address that can transfer data over a network so Uh, uh you can take the example of say smart dustbin see there are many many uh, projects 
coming up, uh, which are based on the Internet of Things. Uh, our AICT is giving uh, motivation to the students to work on the projects which involve the Internet of Things for societal purpose. So one such example, one such project which our uh, students, uh, computer and mechanical students uh, done in, uh, in our college of a smart dustbin. So we see always on the roadside that the dustbins are overflowed. So if we uh, uh, say fix up a sensors at that dustbin, which will be connected to the computers uh, with the help of IP address at the corporation. So as soon as the, uh, they, uh, the corporate person get the signals, that the dustbin is full or it is going to be full within uh, uh, within few hours the immediately that corporate person will come and it will uh, he will take the uh, dustbin from that uh, place okay so like this internet of things this is here also mechanical engineers can do the uh, think of making their career uh, one uh, other uh, you can say the term is i iot that means industrial internet of things. Basically, this refers to the extension and use of the internet of things in the industrial sectors and the applications. So that is also a very upcoming field. Here you can say this is industrial internet of things. See, this is the inter industrial internet of things and these are the consumer uh, having internet of things. So heavy machineries, transportations, then automation, factories, healthcare, everywhere we can use this Internet of Things, which is known as an industrial Internet of Things. Now let us come to the last uh, but very, very, very important future trend of the mechanical engineering uh, that is data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning which is a future of mechanical engineering also see i am also a mechanical engineer so all these things is very new to me also so i am also learning from these just just superficially that what is uh, how mechanical engineer can do the career in this data science okay so basically data science consists of these three fields majorly statistical analysis machine learning and artificial intelligence so all these things are coming under the data science. So basically, what is artificial intelligence? See, as a mechanical engineer, I should explain you also in a very simple language. What is artificial intelligence? So it is nothing but the ability to mimic or to duplicate the functions of human brain. This is the simple definition of the artificial intelligence. Okay. So AI in mechanical engineering can also be known as a machine intelligence okay so for mechanical engineering it is definitely required so it combines uh, the wide variety of advanced technologies to give the machine uh, the ability to it will learn it will adapt then it will make the decisions and then it will display its behavior to get work done from the machine okay so like this we can use artificial intelligence in manufacturing what is machine learning now? So it is an application of the artificial intelligence, which provides the system uh, the ability to automatically learn and improve from the experience without being explicitly programmed. Okay, so machine learning focuses on the development of the computer programs. So that can be accessible uh, for the data and it can also be learned by themselves so that is a machine learning now the broader term is data science okay data science is a multidisciplinary field which is focused on finding solution uh, from the larger data or from the raw data which is collected in a huge uh, size that is a structured data the people are collecting that means businessmen are collecting and this data science expert use these several different techniques to obtain the answers. Uh, they can incorporate computer science, predictive analytics, statistics and machine learning so that from this collected massive data set uh, using their efforts, they can find out the solution to the different problems that have never been thought yet by other people. Okay, so not only mechanical engineer, 
I will say that say any graduate engineer may it be BCA, MCA, BCS or BSc computer person also, he who is having the knowledge of programming language and statistics can think of making his career in data science. So data science is a very broad term. Uh, so all these terms are coming under data science that is uh, say data analytics, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all these are coming under the data science. So it is the most upcoming branch uh, of the science uh, which is required to use today's technology in the best possible way. So uh, say uh, you will find the application of this data science in almost all businesses. Whosoever wants to grow his business, he will use the data science uh, application in his business. You can take the example of say Aadhaar card data, YouTube data, Facebook data, Google data, IBM data or any bank you consider or even in any educational institute, even so many students are appearing for CET or any entrance test, everywhere in every field data is there. So, so, how to analyze this, how to collect this data, how to analyze this data. So, every growing industry needs to analyze the data collected to increase their business or to utilize this for their functionality. So, this is the uh, application of the data science. See, there are so many guided projects are also available online that how to use data science technique to uh, for the functions of any business. Uh, say take very simple example of uh, how data science is useful in predicting uh, the bicycle rentals. Uh, you can say in Pune also a few years back, uh, uh, bicycle rental is uh, has been started by corporation in many societies or in university also it has been started. Okay, so what uh, how we can think or apply data science in this cycle bicycle renting uh, rental case. Uh, from uh, say different machine learning models or credit card details, the raw data collected from renting the cycle, then the data has been analyzed, it is cleaned, it has been filtered and processed with the help of a programming languages like Python and SQL. SQL means it is a structural query language, okay, which is required in data science. So, uh, from these languages, this data has been collected and uh, the answers, uh, the questions have been, uh, the solutions have been found out to these questions. Like I will tell you, say, exam for example, two questions. Uh, we can find out which are the top 10 stations from where the bicycles are collected. Or what is the total number of bicycles rented by the people in a given hour? So like this, so many questions, answers we can get from this data collected and uh, processed. And this data is utilized to make the predictions in the business of bicycle renting such as uh, we can give answers to we can increase the business with the help of these answers. Say for example, we can increase the facility of puncture shops on the most used bicycle route or uh, we can do the maintenance of the bicycle in the uh, in those hours wherein there is a little use of uh, bicycles are there. So like this data science is used uh, in uh, uh, in this such type of business. So uh, see I want to say here that uh, many of faculties or students also I, I saw that they are doing some courses on this SQL or Python maybe 60 hours course, 100 hours course paid course and they are getting a very good job opportunity in the companies where data science knowledge is required. You can say uh, that as accountant is required everywhere, may it be the group of say 15 students, uh, 15 uh, persons you can say, take an example of any uh, small scale industry where hardly 25 people are working, but still accountant is needed there. So like this, as accountant is needed in every uh, uh, application, every field, data analyst or uh, data scientist, it will also be required for future prediction in every field. Okay, so this is a much growing application where mechanical engineer can think of making his or her career.
so this is just i have explained you the artificial intelligence machine learning and data science now the main question is see up till now we have talked about what are the uh, say requirement for any mechanical engineer to work in a future trends of the make uh, say uh, growing uh, uh, field okay so uh, what are the how mechanical engineer will take a knowledge about these uh, languages from where you will because in your four years curriculum they don't have any chance to learn these languages in detail so nowadays there are so many online platforms available for engineers to learn anything like this you can say the uh, Uh, courses available on uh, swayam platform or uh, you can say uh, 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 swayam platform or nptel platform or udemy platform is there or one of the major platform which i want to highlight here is coursera.org because our students are uh, doing so many courses on this coursera.org we have taken the membership of coursera.org so we are very much familiar about these coursera courses so what are the features of these coursera courses so across uh, there are almost 3800 courses are available from leading universities and companies and every course on the coursera is taught by top instructors from the world class universities such as university of michigan stanford university georgia tech university or there are many companies available uh, which are uh, uh, say putting their courses in the coursera like ibm or google cloud etc these courses are 100% online courses and the main feature of these courses is it is self paced learning option what do you mean by self paced learning option means suppose one course of python language is available and which is of the duration four weeks course is there so if one person is very good at uh, pace and he can complete that python course just in a one week also okay or if one student is having a very slow in learning or having a fear in mind that how to learn he is going very is learning very slow he can complete the course of 4 weeks even in 8 weeks also so the best feature of the coursera courses is it is a self paced learning option is there then these courses are having 7 day free trial free trial so whenever the new courses they launch they always give the 7 day free trial and under those seven, if you complete that course within a 7 days you don't have to pay any course fee you can get the free certification otherwise if you want to get a certificate you have to pay the course fee and believe in me these courses are very costly ranging from almost 3000 to 9000 the course fee is there for a uh, few courses one course you can say so how students can take the advantage of these courses see first thing is that you can do any course at free of cost but without certification means what see they charge only for the certification so if you want to do the course without giving any money you complete the course no matter but you won't get certificate and if you think that no this course is very good i want the certificate because i will need that certificate i uh, when i will show my resume to or when i will go for the interview this certification is must you can pay for it and you can get the certificate so what are the see in our college we have these are so many these courses are there which are based on the programming language okay so these are available on other platform also but as i told you the importance of coursera.org so there are see all our majority of our mechanical engineering students are doing these courses programming fundamentals c for everyone code yourself and introduction what do they do see there are different levels of these courses uh, say level 1 2 3 4 5 you start from the say you are not aware of any programming language no you start the very fundamental course say introduction to python getting started with the python okay once you complete that course you will get confidence go for higher level once you complete that course again go for still higher level so like this if you can complete four five levels of these languages you can see how expert you will become uh, uh, even though you are mechanical engineer or any other uh, uh, branch engineer you will get a sound knowledge of any programming language through online courses so 
uh, we have studied that what are the top five courses are available on the 2020 which all over the world the students are giving the preferences so we can say that 2.2 million enrollments is there for these five courses so that's why we search like this and then we tell our students that okay these courses are highly in demand so you also do these courses so like the first demanding course is science of well-being second is machine learning by stanford university third is programming for everyone in python from university of michigan the fourth is learning how to learn and the fifth is english for career development from university of Pennsylvania. now uh, these Coursera courses uh, are divided into three categories, business, technology and data science. You see the difference data science has been created one of the category in the Coursera courses. So much importance is there in the data science uh, field. Okay. So uh, if you are interested, even if you are doing engineering, you might be interested in accounting, communication, finance or, or you can get the basic knowledge of any of these course. Or if you want to learn technology, you can do these courses. Okay. Now these are just name, few names. There are in detail many, many courses are available. And if you are interested, if you want to make your career in data science, you do these basic, basic courses which is data management, data visualization, machine learning, mathematics, statistical programming, statistics, etc. So this is just I have explained you the artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science. So one of the report uh, which is available on Coursera.org that is known as a global skill index plan uh, report. Okay. If we divide this global ranking of the business technology and data science into four categories one is cutting edge which are the cutting edge countries which are the competitive countries which are the emerging countries and which are the lagging countries in all these three types business technology and data science so our india is at this rank uh, from the study of this global skill index which is published in july 2020 so our India is at rank number 50 out of 60 in business category. That means we are falling in the lagging country. Our India fall, uh, is having the rank 44 out of 60 in technology category. So here we are somewhat doing better. That means we are falling in the emerging country. Okay, but we are having rank number 51 out of 60 in data science category. So that means we are falling in the lagging country. So there is a sc so much scope for our Indian people to make their career in data science category. So in relation with this, whatever the global skill index we have read, okay, the very good thing has happened is that, uh, that our national education policy 2020 which has been recently published by our uh, India government that is uh, having uh, so what is the what is basically this national education policy so actually uh, it will focus on a skill based education okay so though according to our uh, that global skill index our India is lagging into the skill development so it is a very good thing that our national education policy has given weightage for the skill based education instead of exam oriented education. So under this national education policies, now the engineering student of one branch can choose to learn the subject of other branches during his four years career. That means the students will be having liberty to learn any subject of his interest irrespective of his branch. Okay, so this is coming under the you can say professional development scheme. So they will, the students will get credits also of that course. So uh, actually this is happening in all, uh, you can say uh, autonomous institutes or the deemed university. But still this is not happening in the, in all the colleges which are falling under the category, which are affiliated to the any one of the, any of the university. We are not having any freedom to give our students to select the, so that our students should select the subject of their choice. So even if they are mechanical engineering students, they should have liberty to learn microcontroller uh, subject from the EI, uh, ENTC or uh, say advanced mechatronics 
from E and T like this. So now this is going to happen. So in this way, uh, our students will be able to develop at least one skill of his interest during the four years of his engineering course. And like this, our that will helpful for our student also to get a bit better job opportunity in the future trend of the uh, engineering uh, field. And our India will also go uh, grow slowly, slowly uh, in the uh, data science field and upcoming field. So uh, I just want to highlight here the in the last slide that what are the top emerging professions? Okay, so blockchain development is one of the topmost uh, India's fastest growing profession for 2020. Uh, which has uh, been recorded the highest growth rate over the past five years. Then there has been a huge interest in learning about artificial intelligence and data science. Okay. Then according to Coursera Analytics, the most sought after data science skill includes AI, statics, uh, statistics, machine learning, data management, statistical programming, and data visualization. And demand for data-driven decision makers continues to grow. See, there is a projected 15% growth in data science careers and almost 1,10,000 new jobs are available by uh, or will be made available by 2020 across the world. And if you think of 2025, after five years, what can be the future of any mechanical engineer? Definitely, there is a great future is there for any mechanical engineering students. Uh, so, uh, what I want to highlight through this presentation that uh, mechanical engineering is uh, the evergreen branch. We just have to give the proper direction to the students where they are interested in which domain they are they want to make their career and uh, it is the most versatile branch mechanical engineering. Okay, so here just I have given the example of few mechanical students of JSU, how they are doing the courses on Python. So there are many, many courses on Python where the mechanical engineering students are doing. Uh, till date, students registered are 62 and number of students completed the Python course is 47. So like this, we are trying for our students in our college that students should uh, make their career in their interest or if they don't have any interest let them go to the any field which which is the future trend of the mechanical engineering so that they can get a very good placement so thank you very much for listening my views on mechanical engineering being a mechanical engineer i always think that uh, mechanical engineer is uh, engineering is a very good branch is the most versatile branch so students should always think of taking mechanical branch whosoever are interested in making career in uh, say a multidisciplinary branch or core mechanical engineering. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Appreciate our efforts by subscribing to our channel. Thank you.